the home hai li i am work for erdik uh cultural inland research program uh, army corps and uh, i have been in the in the team uh developed for cms a coastal modeling system uh, and uh, during the last few years, and we have an upgrade or a model grid and uh, uh, design from uh, non-uniform rectangular grid to telescoping. Uh, since we do that, we have uh, see a uh, number of uh, uh, applications, and also we have used that particle uh, uh, tracking model with the CMS uh, telescoping grid. Uh, so we, we think it's, uh, it's necessary to, to have those uh, kind of uh, webinar and to introduce uh, the coupling between PTM and CMS. And then we usually do that uh, on an annual basis uh, for, for our surf, uh, workshop. And uh, since it's so easy to do this webinar, so we, we have planned to do that. And then since last year, uh, SERP has uh, provided a series of uh, webinars on CMS and JNK, and, and this is one for uh, uh, PTM application with CMS. And uh, this is the outline of uh, uh, this uh, uh, webinar. And uh, first, uh, I I would uh, I briefly introduce the uh, uh, coastal modeling system, a uh, very brief, and also. Uh, so the next one is the uh, introduction to uh, particle tracking model, uh, which is PTM. And after those, uh, uh, in, in the introduction to PTM and CMS, and I, I will also provide you uh, a, a few applications. And we uh, use PTM coupled with the CMS for some studies. And since this model was originally developed by, by a SERP and a dual program, so the uh, dual people have the, like a Dr. Uh, Tahiri Lackey, and she has used a, a PTM uh, coupled with some of hydro model for a lot of uh, a grading study. I also introduced some of her application here. And then follow that introduction presentation. Uh, I uh, go to a simple application for uh, idealized inlet. So this includes uh, the model setup and uh, a little bit of post analysis. And also, we recently have applied CMS PTM uh, to a a uh, dredging uh, erosion of uh, transport study at the Port Orford port, uh, port, Oregon. And uh, if we have time, I also would like to uh, talk a little bit about that uh, 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 application. And uh, I will be the instructor, instructor for the for the webinar and also Mitch Brown. And also sitting in the room, uh, we have a uh, uh, Dr. Alex Sanchez and Dr. Li Hua Lin, and both are the developer of the CMS Flow, CMS Wave model. So if you have any question, uh, go ahead and ask. So, and, uh, so they can provide a relevant uh, answer to you, to your question. So first, uh, uh, introduction to CMS. And this is the, the frame, uh, frame chart for CMS. Uh, many of you probably see this uh, many times. And uh, CMS, uh, as you can see from here, is uh, integrate with uh, current hydrodynamic and sediment transport model. And uh, this model uh, is the interface with the uh, uh, Surface water modeling system, SMS, and and this model including CMS flow, CMS wave, and also this model can be coupled with the PTM. Uh, you will see later. So PTM can be derived by a different hydrodynamic model uh, in Army Corps, 
and the CMS is one of those models. And the objective to develop this model is to deliver engineers best of advanced models uh, that can be used as practical tool for coastal inlets and the navigation channel and adjacent beach studies. And uh, the model, as a couple, as you can mention early, is a couple and can be simulated a different physical process, coastal process. And uh, it's PC based and uh, easy to use and uh, provide you a fast, robust, and accurate result. And uh, for technical transfer, uh, you can find uh, manual technical reports and journal papers and also a wiki page and uh, for this model. And uh, so help is uh, easily available and uh, from different sources. And also we provide uh, a regular or irregular workshop and a webinar like this one. And also we, if you have any question, you can call us. We provide a phone help. And so this one show you a little bit uh, CMS flow uh, a key feature. Uh, as you can see from here, uh, originally the model was developed uh, for the red, uh, Cartesian grid, is, which is non-uniform or uniform uh, rectangular grid. So that kind of grid is very easy to set up. And uh, I think since 2009, we have developed a different grid for uh, CMS flow, uh, which is a, a quadri telescoping grid. And uh, this grid is more efficient, more flexible, and uh, uh, it can uh, refine the grid locally and doesn't affect uh, some other area. So it's reduced uh, computational time and uh, also can focus on the, on the, on the, your, your interest area. And uh, currently, we have an uh, implicit and explicit solver for the model. So, uh, implicit solver is linked to the telescoping grid. Currently, uh, explicit, you still have to use the non-uniform partition grid. And uh, you can see from here, uh, for, for different solver and uh, time step can be different and uh, different feature uh, can be used for different solvers. And this is a, a CMS wave uh, key feature. Hello? So CMS wave uh, can reflect the most, uh, most uh, coastal process and uh, showing refraction, diffraction, and a reflection. And wire cutting, uh, wave breaking, we have a different formula for that. Uh, wind generation, wind generated wave, uh, wave current, wave, wave interaction also uh, in the model. And also in the model, we have wave transmission run up and over talking. And the muddy bottom, uh, can be reflected in the CMS wave. And the uh, non-uniform Cartesian grid, as I said earlier, and also we have fast mode uh, for easy, fast uh, diagnostic run. Uh, you, can, you can use the fast mode and less uh, spectrum uh, in the model. And uh, this is the sediment transport key feature uh, in CMS. And for CMS transport model, uh, we have an uh, equilibrium total load transport and our uh, equilibrium bad load and uh, plus uh, advection diffusion uh, suspended load. And also we have a non-equilibrium uh, calculation. And for uh, those different models, uh, we have a, a formula developed by long circuit. Fine Rye, uh, Watanabe, and Solstice. 
So user can uh, use a different formula for those uh, uh, sediment transport calculations. And also in sediment transport model, we have hard bottom, avalanches, and bad slope influence on bad loads. And also we are developing a multiple size sediment transport now. Uh, for a CMS documentation, and uh, most easy way uh, is to uh, access to third website, as uh, shown here, and also we have a wiki page. Uh, they provide a different documentation for CMS and some other model. And you can you can find user menu, user guide, and uh, formulation theories, everything almost here in, in the sub uh, wiki page or sub, sub page. Uh, this is a publication and uh, technical report, uh, technical notes, a journal paper, and some other uh, documentation. So technical transfer, yeah. Uh, okay, that, that's about uh, CMS, and uh, any questions before I go to uh, TTM? Okay, uh, no question. Uh, particle tracking model. Uh, particle tracking model is a like Langdon particle tracker. And that model, uh, transport process. And uh, that includes advection, diffusion, deposition for sediment particles. And, uh, the constitute, uh, the model can simulate, uh, including sediment and uh, contaminates and, uh, fish larvae, uh, fish egg, uh, biological and, uh, particles. And those particles mostly uh, are neutron volume particles. Uh, it doesn't have mass. So you can do different kind of simulation with, when you specify if it's a sediment particle or with mass or a neutron volume particle or with the biological uh, feature in, in, the, in the model. Uh, this figure shows you the, the, the particle uh, model input and output. On the left hand side, uh, you can see, uh, the model require the grid asymmetry data. That's from hydrodynamic model you use. So for hydrodynamic model and width model, uh, you can access, I mean, coupled with the PTM, uh, is the ADH model, SDRC, EFTC, CH3D, and CMS. So in this talk, of, uh, we, were, we were talking about PTM coupling with the CMS. So all the, all the hydro input is from CMS. And also, uh, for the PTM input, uh, we need native sediment data. And uh, so you, if you have data, you can specify 2D uh, native sediment distribution, or you can specify a uniform uh, sediment, uh, uh, native sediment uh, for particle tracking model. So I will show you later for, for PTM input. Uh, that's, uh, if it's uniform sediment, is uh, pretty straightforward. And also, uh, another important thing is the uh, user needs to specify, uh, or define your, your sources. And this, uh, including, uh, like a dredging, uh, placement for all, uh, applications. And also, and, uh, CSO. And, uh, for, on the right hand side is, uh, is the model output. And to do this, uh, uh, analysis, and, uh, under SMS, and uh, we can, we can now do the deposition, concentration. So, I will see the, the particle density. So in the analysis, post analysis. And also after we set up the, the demonstration, 
So we'll, I, I will show you a little bit about this uh, post analysis tool. Uh, so calculation in the PTM. So in this model, and uh, both wave and the current can be an input uh, to the PTM. So uh, in other words, a PTM can take both wave and uh, hydro input. And uh, so that will calculate sediment mobility and the bottom shear stress. And uh, also in the PTM, uh, we have a temporarily, spatially varying bed form and the variable bed roughness for groove decay of a bed form. And also we have a suspended sediment transport and a bed load transport. And we have a settling entrainment algorithm in the model for the, for the particle movement. And also, uh, TTM includes hiding and exposure function. And also influence of bad slope on sediment transport, particle transport. And uh, although CMS is a 2D model, but in PTM we can and uh, convert it uh, 2D velocity to a, a 3D uh, vertical profile. So use that 3D profile, we can calculate the uh, uh, 3D particle uh, transport. Of course, if you have a 3D model, so the PTM can read in 3D hydro input uh, to drive the sediment uh, particle transport directly. And also, uh, we can we can use the neutron buoyant particle and uh, in the model. And uh, PTM capacity, and uh, so the model output uh, used SMS. And we can visualize the particle pathway and the state and uh, calculate the rest in time uh, in a water body. Uh, monitor monitor specific, specific source of sediment transport uh, to the coastal inlet or navigation channel. And uh, also, we can predict a creation and erosion zone and uh, forecast the potential increase in stability and deposition. And also we can isolate and track particles from uh, uh, different sources, like outfall, coast outfall, and uh, also ship propeller, uh, propeller and induced uh, suspension. And uh, specify those as a source and then uh, track the particle movement. Uh, for, for sediment sources and traps, and, uh, in this PTM, we can have, a, a point source, line source, and an area source. So that will mimic a different dredging scenario. And, uh, in a later, uh, application, I will show you some, some kind of, a, a source to simulate, uh, the dredging operation. And uh, also, we can specify our particle trap uh, in the model. Uh, we have open trap, a uh, closed trap. So the open trap allows particle into the trap and uh, exit the trap. And closed trap is only particle into the trap and then stay in the trap. And uh, we have a, a, a some application for for the trap. And also use trap, we can calculate the rest of the time, and uh, we can uh, have a, a plot spatial map uh, of a particle a transport parameter. And in the, in the, in the particle output, we, we can select those different parameters as the output. This uh, includes mobility, shear stress, and mass, density, and also uh, uh, band form. Yeah. And uh, so we have uh, uh, applied uh, PTM uh, to different uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, study. And sediment transport around uh, coastal structure and around inlets and adjacent beach 
and also uh, send the transport related to the channel uh, design, including and bypassing uh, project, and also uh, related to the channel dredging and material placement. So can can use particle tracking model for that kind of study, and also eroding of transport. Uh, that's a, a, a example I will mention uh, for a Port Orford uh, study uh, in Oregon, and also uh, a dual program has applied PTM uh, for uh, larva fish, uh, fish egg, and uh, water partic particulate uh, transport. In, in their, uh, some of their studies. And, uh, just to list uh, some application, uh, uh, we have been using, uh, this PTM and, uh, with, uh, with CMS. And some are used by, by district, uh, some are used, uh, at early here. Uh, next I will, I will show you a, a few, uh, uh, examples and, uh, a few applications we use for, uh, different kind of study. And the first one, uh, is, uh, beneficial use of sediment dredges from navigation channel. And, uh, as you can see from the figure, that's in, uh, Poplar Island, uh, in Chesapeake Bay, inside of Chesapeake Bay. And, uh, uh, you can see that's the base. So the purple island is here. And this island is, uh, rebuilt, uh, by using, uh, dredge material. And, uh, we have applied a CMS PTM to this, uh, uh small cell. And, uh, calculate the resident time with part of a tracking model. And uh, this is the model set up. And you see the, the grid and the proximity data uh, in the background. And also, uh, you see the cell size and water depth. Uh, cell size is very small. It's high resolution. And because of the area is very small, it's only a few hundred uh, meters in, in, in length and width. And this is uh, how we uh, calculate the resident time for this uh, uh, small cell. And uh, we have designed a trap uh, surrounding the area. And then once you put a trap in the model, so the, when, you, when you run PTM, it will generate a, a file called resident.out. So that file gives you uh, each particle enter and exit the time, uh, the particle uh, enter and exit to the, the trap. So after you, you finish the run, you can uh, read that file, uh, get the resident time directly from that file. So that's how we, how we did it in this uh, application. So as you can see here, we have to release particles from uh, 57 different sources. And each source has a spatial distance of 30 meters. And we have set up a release time interval is one hour and release through one tidal cycle and semi down of that tidal cycle. And so after the, the run, so this is just the animation show the so the after release of the particle move in the in the model area. And you see the, the particle and uh, mostly stay in the cell and didn't go off to, to the open uh, bay area. Since it, this is a, a sediment particle, a lot of particle and Settle down at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, this is just a, a contour uh, for uh, rest of the time. Like the number is in days, so that 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 show at each point uh, how many days the particle released from this point to stay in the cell. So so you see the the, the particle near the axis uh, stay shorter 
uh, in the cell, and then the particle inside the, the cell stay longer, almost through the entire simulation period. Uh, this is a, a stretch material and the management application uh, by dual uh, study. And uh, this is in uh, Brunswick Harbor in uh, Georgia, I think. And uh, Tahiri and uh, Lati, uh, she did this study. And uh, this is a, a dredging uh, uh, and influence uh, study. As you can see from uh, uh, the map here, uh, there's a few interested area uh, in this, uh, around the, the, the navigation channel. And the red color is the uh, SAV, that's the uh, vegetation. And uh, yellow color is the migrating fish uh, through the area. And uh, we have a coral reef and a dredging, uh, dredging project is the green area. So, uh, depends on a different kind of dredging and uh, the, the study has to simulate uh, uh, the particle uh, either overflow or leaking uh, through dredging practice. And also study uh, how this area affected by this uh, material and an overflow or leaking from the dredging uh, practice. And, uh, and there, I also have an animation here so you can see the, the particle released from uh, the navigation channel and then go through the area. And then you can see which area affected more by the particle. And uh, that's basically the, uh, the study done. Uh, and also, uh, uh, so post-analysis, uh, they did the suspended sediment concentration analysis. And uh, this is converted from a number of particles. So uh, I would say this uh, uh, particle density is a, is a more uh, proper term uh, for this uh, 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 distribution. And uh, you can see the, the, the influence by those uh, particle distribution, uh, or uh, you, you call it suspended sediment concentration here. Uh, yeah, this uh, this is some uh, early uh, basic publication, so you can find those uh, reports and uh, technical notes or in uh, SERP uh, wiki uh, website, SERP website. And uh, if you have an interest, please check those documents. And also, uh, do a website has more publication, and then you can go there and check as well. I think that's uh, about the uh, the introduction to CMS and uh, PTM, and uh, for people, I, I don't know if uh, you have any questions, please ask before I go to the uh, demonstration part. Okay. Thank you. Question, how did you calculate the set of concentrations as shown, as shown in the last image? Uh, that one I will, I will show you after I, I show my demonstration. Uh, that's, I, I believe, least in the post analysis. Any other question? Okay. Uh, the file uh, needs to uh, send you. And 
I, I put everything, uh, all the files are here. That including uh, hydro input and uh, wind input and also uh, particle tracking uh, file and also for that uh, sediment uh, particle uh, suspended uh, uh, sediment concentration. Uh, we need to develop another uh, sufficient grid. So you can see there's a I, I underscore PTM file there. So that, that's the grid uh, generated for this uh, post analysis. And uh, also we have a particle uh, output file uh, all under this directory. And uh, so this is very simplified case. So I only specify one point source uh, in this application. But for some other application, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, to uh, simulate the dredging uh, operation, we can specify a different source, like a vertical line source, and a moving uh, sources. And uh, I also have this file uh, here in this folder. Uh, uh, that file is the pt1 uh, dot source. So the one, one point source is the pt dot source. So different sources. So when you, when you bring particle tracking file, you bring in those different sources. You can you can see uh, how how did we uh, specify those uh, sources in, in the particle uh, checking model. So next, I will I will go through the the steps and uh, how how did I set up this uh, uh, particle simulation? How did I uh, do the the post analysis to get this? Uh, uh, sediment, suspended sediment uh, concentration, and also uh, particle accumulation, uh, different different uh, uh, parameters for for uh, post analysis. So I I basically put the, all the uh, input file in, in a different folder. I just uh, uh, grab the file from this uh, the folder you have, and copy the hydro file, wave file file so under this folder. So I, I will, so you can see here, in fact, I have a, a setup file here. So this file uh, show you the model domain of this idealized inlet I use uh, for the for this uh, demonstration. And this is a pretty small domain. It's uh, only about two, three kilometers uh, in scale. So that's why when you see the particle movement, uh, is the particle after you, 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 you set up the model, you see the particle faster, uh, reach the boundary and then uh, go on, outside the boundary. And, uh, those are the, are the, are the particle input file and output file. And, uh, the first one is a hydro solution file as well. That's uh, from the CMS uh, flow uh, output. And the uh, particle uh, PTM requires this file. And, and also follow that is the wave output file. And if you c combine a wave and a current in the PTM simulation, you need the uh, uh, WAV file, the extension WAV, and also brick, wave brick file, BRK file. So you need these two files for uh, PTM. And uh, also the, the next uh, four file uh, is the hydro input file. So both the grid information uh, are needed by the PTM. So CM card file, a TL file, and a, and a grid uh, uh, model parameter file. Uh, those, those are needed by the, by the PTM. And then the full of that is a, is a wave input file. And for PTM simulation, you basically need the C 
SIN file, SIN file, uh, for, for PTM input. So next one is a, is a, how the source file looks like. So the, I have two source file lists here. But the top source file is a, is a one source, one point, one point source in the center of the inlet. As you can see from here. And the bottom of the panel is a, is a source, is a three sources. And uh, you can see from the, the, the figure here, so there's the first source release particle from the bottom. And then the second source uh, from the entire water column. And the third source is from the top layer. So it lists the different sources here. And also the source three source moving and uh, with time. So when you when you run the, uh, the show the particle simulation, you see the source point is moving and uh, towards uh, uh, different places. So first I will uh, bring in the in the hydro file for PTM setup. I open 11.1, SM 11.1. Open hydro file, CM car file. And, uh, I, the first one I, I need to do is uh, generate a source file, right? And uh, for source file, I need a map module. So you click map module, and then select a, a point, right? And then you put it in the center of the inlet, right? That, that's your source. That's your point source. And then after you're doing that, you right click default coverage to relate this source to PTM. But otherwise, it, it, it didn't know if uh, is the source point for PTM. So you go to type, model, and then you go to PTM. So click PTM. So this point will be a PTM source point. So after you do that, you select point. Select this point. Double click. So you will see the, the window to so where you can uh, specify your source feature. Right? What kind of source is this? And uh, what's the release scenario from this source for particle tracking? So here, the type I choose the uh, mass resource, point mass resource. You can have an instant mass source, and, uh, and you can have vertical line source. So that's released from uh, the vertical line, so you specify. So since this is a point source, I select uh, this point source from here. So this, this here, I list the time, uh, release, uh, at what uh, location, and elevation, uh, from bottom, and uh, parcel mass, and horizontal radius, and vertical radius, and also read, uh, of release, particle release. Medium brain size, you specify your, your particle brain size, and the standard deviation of this particle parcel, and density, and for velocity, and uh, usually the last three parameters we just use default, so that's the negative value here. So that that will use default for your simulation. So I specify release. Our hyper run has a goal for two days, so I I will specify release the particle for two hours from, from uh, start of the simulation. And then stop release uh, uh, the particle. 
So this is, uh, uh, in the, in the hardware simulation, I have used, uh, uh, the time, starting time from 2001. So here you need to change this to 2001. That's the release time, starting time. So from 12, up to 12 a.m. and then, well, it will end it at like, uh, two, two o'clock in the morning. So that's two hour release. And then I, I start the release. So, doing that, I just, uh, change it to two o'clock, one second, right? AM. So I, I just need to uh, change the rate to zero. And then the particle will, will start release. And then here also I specify ending time uh, for the for the model. So I specify to January third. Maybe two o'clock is fine. So I basically is ended as the January third, twelve a.m. So so that that that's about it. That's the first first file. So I click OK to close this window. So uh, I finished this uh, uh, first file uh, specification. Uh, next one, so we go to uh, PTM to generate a, a new simulation for PTM. So to doing that, we click the uh, small icon here. So that that will bring you to the uh, PTM module. So you go top, you see the PTM here, and then. Create a new simulation. And then you go to model control to set up the, the model simulation. So we have a, a four page here needs to be filled. And uh, the first part is the simulation start time for uh, uh, PTM, right? So we will start from 2001 here. And duration of start time, we specify two day simulation. So it's ended at January 3rd, 12 a.m. So I change to 3. A time step, I use 10 seconds. And, uh, also, we like to include the wave in this simulation. But here, so we can't, we can't do anything for wave. But uh, when we go to file page, uh, file page, there's a wave and breaking button here. So if you include CMS wave here, and then go back, the time, so you can have a, a, a wave here. But uh, this one also requires you link to all the wave files. I, I will do that later and then come back to page, uh, time page. And the particle output and uh, our time step is uh, 10 seconds, right? So we will specify every 30 minutes we have a particle output. So it will be 180 time steps. And uh, for uh, background information and the parameter update, so we like to have, since our hydro output is every 30 minutes, so we will, we will do update exactly like 30 minutes. So in, in, in between, all the value hydro uh, updates will be interpolated. Yeah, so we will update this also 180 time steps, and then hydro information flow and elevation also 180 time steps. And also here is the hydrodynamic start time. So our hydro also starts from 2001. Yeah. And next we go to file uh, uh, page. So this page allows us to link to CMS flow, 
CMS Waste Input for PTM. So here you see, uh, we would use the hydro output from CMS Flow 2D model, right? And uh, we need to link to the CM car file here. That's all grid and uh, hydrodynamic information uh, from this file. And so the next one is a, is a hydro solution file. So we need to link to the SOL file, hydro solution file. And I will open this file and select path for current and water surface elevation. So here, already linked to current. And the next one, we need to link to water surface elevation of PTM. There's a question about that, actually, that's come up. Um, the question is, in SMS 11.1, .1, when you set up your CMS flow grid, um, it actually sets up multiple output files, it's not all in one SOL file. Yeah, yeah. There's a velocity file, there's a right. surface elevation file. Right. How do you get that to work here without manipulating uh, the product and them together? You know, yeah, we have uh, we have noticed that, and uh, one 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 way to do it is uh, uh, before you running uh, CMS, if you know you are going to use the TTM, you want a solution file, and uh, you can specify solution SOL file also in the advanced card, right? Currently, with the monitor output, you can you cannot just edit those files like uh, water surface elevation, velocity. Yeah. You cannot edit just uh, simply edit. Uh, you have to I mean, generate a solution file by doing uh, advanced part. Yeah. So maybe before we end today, we could kind of show how to add those cards in yeah. through yeah. the CMS flow forward. people can know how to get around that issue. Right. And also, the next one is uh, for boundary condition file. So we need uh, we need to generate this file. And uh, what you need to do is uh, create uh, when model is run, uh, make this selection, and then give a file name. Uh, it will generate a, a BC file for PTM, either H5 file or a BC file. So you just give a name, and uh, particle tracking or, or BC. Uh, it will it will generate this file for uh, for PTM simulation, so nothing more. And uh, uh, for sediment source, uh, right now uh, it uses the default coverage. So we already specify source on the map data default coverage. So we can we can select a file name when you when you save PTM. It will save your source to this name. So, oh, I, I did, I did it in, in the wrong location. I should go to, I, I should go to test. I should go to test the location, but I, I went up here. So I just don't save. Okay. I think I, Go here. Yeah. Okay. I, I go to my test. I don't mess up with the, the other folder. Yeah. So we we have a source file. 
so it was saved to this uh, PT source. Uh, when you when you save the uh, uh, PTM uh, simulation. And then also we need to uh, generate a neighboring file. Uh, those information are also needed by PTM. And also we select the create. First time when you run, we, you create when model is run. So the second time when you run, the file already there. So you, uh, the PTM will not need to generate this file. Uh, only the first time when you run the model. So you also give a uh, need to give a file name. So with the extension neighbor, so it's pt.neighbor file. So you save, and then you go to a uh, native sediment uh, green file. And uh, you can have a, a sediment uh, uh, file uh, set uh, uh, beforehand. And also you can have a uniform data uh, information here. So for uniform data information, you can have your number here, like C35, C50, C90, and those numbers also require by PTM. So you have to uh, specify those uh, information here. And uh, in this case, I just use key for the value here, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And uh, I click OK. And then I go to, uh, right now we don't have trap, so I, I not include trap here. So if you have trap, you need to also uh, specify trap on the map data and then link here and for the simulation. And uh, the next one is the wave I'm breaking. And uh, I already click uh, CMS wave uh, for wave input. And then I go to option to link those different wave files. The first file is a same file, SIM file. So you link through here. Uh, you have SIM, so you link, and then you go to load WAV file, WAV file, and also a link here. And uh, number of spectra in file. So our simulation has a, for WAV uh, input, we have a three hour uh, WAV input. So for 2D simulation, we have a 17 spectra file. Uh, in the, in the wave file. So I put a 17 here. This is for 2D, 2D simulation. And then I link to, uh, wave breaking file. Load breaking. DRK file. So open. Okay. So, so basically I, 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 I done all this, uh, uh, linking for, uh, hydro and a wave here. And then I can go back to time case and specify information about the wave uh, input here. So wave start time also 2001. And the time interval is three hours. So here is the second. So it's 10,800. So that's, uh, that's uh, how many hours here. And then uh, select the computation. Uh, I, I didn't touch most of those numbers here. And, uh, I just use default for those parameters. And, uh, for, for different parts of movement, you might consider maybe change the diffusion, uh, term or diffusion coefficient. And for some early study, I, I tried to modify those uh, numbers. It didn't really change my result uh, that much. Yeah, so for, for this uh, practice, I just uh, used the default. And uh, you see the, the, the velocity here. On the velocity, we use the 2D uh, logarithm. Yeah, so it's converted 2D to a vertical profile. So in the real uh, simulation, it's like a 3D uh, part of movement. So output, and uh, we uh, select output here, and we select state, and source, mobility. And some parameters are select, like a mass, density, uh, density here is for the later post-analysis, for calculate uh, uh, 
particle suspended uh, uh, sediment uh, concentration. So I need to convert the uh, particle uh, mass to volume. So I need this information. So I click here. So it's, it's basically uh, just to check what you need uh, for those parameters. If you don't need it, uh, don't click it because it will generate, uh, depending on how many particles you need, it will uh, generate a big file here. I think uh, I'm, I'm done for, for the uh, PPM setup. Okay. Uh, so the next one is a, is a round, round model. So we have both file, we have a setup ready. So next we will go to a round model. Okay, six one. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot to, to save the PTM control file. So I need to save this file first. So TCF file, you choose. I give a name. So save this file. So everything is saved. And, uh, and go to raw model. So it's, uh, it cal calculates the uh, boundary neighboring information for PTM. It is a, is a pretty fast because we release only 180 particle here. And, uh, so this, this table show, show the, uh, the, the running information. So if you want to check those information after you run, you can output the text, text file, uh, for, uh, about this information. And, uh, so the information has a, like five columns right here. And uh, it's born 180, alive 65, dead 150, active 1, dormant 64. So, so alive, uh, of course, is is a, is, a, is active, still active. So dead particle is either a berry in the bottom or is a get out of the open boundary and never come back. And uh, active means uh, the particle is still moving. And so all that is the particle may be settled down in the bottom. It can be resubstantiated. So you, you can see when you finish the simulation, you can move the particle either there or stay at the bottom. Only one is still moving. Yeah. So we, we don't save this information. We just active. So so you can, let's see if we have a particle shape. So you can see the particle release from this point. If we're moving with time, right? After you release those particles. You see most of the particle inside the inlet doesn't move. And the outside uh, through the boundary goes out. So never come back. So those are the dead particles. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, some, some, some come back, I think, is, is, is some dormant particle. It's stay at the bottom and it starts to move. That's the backward, yeah, that's backward. Okay. So, so that, that's basically, uh, the model of a a simple demonstration. And, uh, so next, I, I will show you the, like, uh, how do we, uh, set up for, uh, uh, for, for the suspended sediment concentration. So before that, uh, if you have uh, any questions, please.
So no question, right? Okay. Uh, uh, for the for the suspended uh, particle concentration, I need to bring the solution file to SMS. So here I I need to open. I didn't bring it yet because I on the PTM I just link to that file. And uh, I'll bring in solution file here. Because I need the water surface elevation for the volume calculation, concentration uh, calculation. Uh, to do this analysis, uh, we need to generate a, a, a new uh, partition grid. So basically, it's a, a square square grid, and uh, to do that, we need to go to a math module, like uh, probably most of you, uh, you already know that, how to, how to generate a, a, a Cartesian grid, right? So I, I will like, go to here, for Cartesian grid, we need to go to either CMS flow or CMS wave to generate the Cartesian grid. So we choose the CMS flow here. And click this icon. So that's a, a frame, a grid frame. And also for the grid, we need the depth information. So this information will be interpolated from the original hydro model. So it's a, a grid here. And uh, we need to convert this uh, grid to a scatter to a scatter point, right? On the CMS. So we go to 2D scatter. Uh, so we have uh, all the depth elevation and everything here. And then we need depth information. Uh, to interpolate to this model grid. So we go to here. We generate our, our model grid. So the cell size is 10 meter. So we will specify a maybe smaller grid, 2 meter, maybe. 2 by 2. And we choose a source for the proximity here. So we use the scatter set. I select uh, depth, depth information. Okay. okay. So we, we generate a, a, a small grid here. And also, uh, for this uh, uh, Calculation, I mean, suspended sediment uh, concentration. So, SMS original design PTM coupled with the uh, uh, mesh uh, model, like uh, SF, ADH, uh, it didn't link to uh, CMS. So, to properly interpret all the hardware information to this new grid. So we need converted the 
Water self evaluation and the water depth to a mesh module. That's why you see in the folder we give to you, there's a mesh module there. It's converted from this scatter uh, data set. And also, uh, in the abstract model, the edit the potential data it has a negative value. So it's opposite to CMS. CMS has a positive depth, but abstract has a negative depth. So here we need to uh, times negative one for for the CMS depth. So on the on the scatter point, we need to go to data calculator and uh, times one minus one for the depth to generate the file have have to be called elevation. But right now, it, this is quite an awkward. But we have already talked to Alcoville uh, people. Uh, they are working on that. So to make a, a smooth transition for CMS, uh, for this kind of calculation uh, later. And uh, they're still working on that. So we uh, calculate uh, a negative depth to give value to elevation here. So we down here. So for the for the for that calculation, we need uh, we need uh, what the surface. Uh, we don't need the current uh, magnitude, the current velocity. So we can delete delete those two. And uh, we don't need the menu number. We don't need that. So we also uh, delete this. And then we convert these two variables, water surface elevation and elevation. That's depth. And uh, convert it to a mass, 2D mass. So that, that information later on will be used for, for concentration calculation. So this is our new, new model grid. Uh, we rename that to so maybe idealize inlet, right? Yeah. Okay. So after that, we go to particle module. Particle module here. And then we go to data uh, tab and come to computer grid data set. Computer grid data set. And then see you, you see the there's some 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 tab here, right? The left hand side is a variable parameter you want to output from this calculation. So you have a particle count. Accumulation at the bottom is the accumulation, material accumulation at the bottom. And also concentration. So you can click this concentration here. Right? And then this is the three, uh, data set you want to calculate. And then on the right hand side, you set up uh, all the input files. Input information for this calculation. So you see the, the animation is start for two days. Right here. And uh, you need link to the new partition grid, which is idealized inlet. That's right. And you have a particle set, state, particle mass density, and these are all the outputs from PTM. So that's why in the PTM output, if you want to do this analysis, you need all these outputs. And uh, if you don't have that, you need to rerun the model and generate those files. And then here, so you will need link to facility, model facility, and all the water surface elevation. So here you link, select data set, and click this mass, elevation on the mass, select. And then go next one, link to water surface elevation, water surface elevation on the mass. Right? And then, okay. It, it will do the calculation. 
and generate this concentration map for you with the time. So in our case, we don't release much, much particle. So the concentration is pretty low. You will see a, a, a low number there. And also particle move out the, uh, move out the model of this very fast. So the calculation finish. So you see on the idealized inlet here, you have three new uh, parameters here. Particle count, particle accumulation, and particle concentration. So you can show the particle distribution here, and the concentration distribution here. And uh, I will uh, unclick the other grade. So you, you will see only this this domain here, and uh, and display uh, control. So a lot of a lot of the zero value. So I. I don't want to show the zero value, just the non zero value here. You see the, you still see the particle here. And uh, we go to beginning. <coughs> Let's see, I, I don't, I don't want to show the particle. Just uh, I can click, unclick the particle. Huh? Uh, I already unclicked that. Why is still showing that? I don't think that's... Oh, that's... I don't think that's particle, that's just the areas of the particle density. No, it's just your I I don't see value here. Yeah. So it it should have some value here. So I I have to generate uh, some value in in the folder I gave to you. And uh, if you if you bring those files, you you go through some of those steps, and you don't have to go through all those steps I just uh, went through, and then you should see the the concentration contour there. I don't know why here I unclicked the particle uh, uh, in the display option. But it still shows the particle, 
Yeah. Yeah. That that's about the uh, the the concentration. Uh, during the calculation, I don't see any error message. It, it looks fine. So that's all basic steps, and uh, you you show the the suspended particle density or suspended sediment concentration here. Uh, you have any questions? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, I also I also like to show some uh, the the moving force I mentioned earlier, and uh, I already uh, put on that uh, uh, folder. I deal with the internet here. And uh, if you bring in this, uh, so GT one. That's, that's the source here, and PT1 dot source. Yeah, you can you can see uh, this source, and uh, this is the source one. This is what we call line source, and this is source one. That's this red line. That's source one. That's the release particle. Uh, from uh, uh, three meter uh, near the bottom, and you see the three meter near the bottom, and uh, the second source, you click number two, is this uh, red line source. So this uh, uh, release the particle through entire water column through the red color, eleven meter. You see this a uh, uh, top elevation relative to bottom. Is 11, right? That's 11 meter water column that we release particle during uh, simulation. So the third source is the, the short one at, at the top. So the red one is the from, is the, is the top elevation is 11 meter, uh, from 9, 9 meter to 11 meter is only uh, 2 meter high. So this is a three source. And uh, with this source, after we run uh, the particle simulation, and uh, we get uh, that's a lot of particle release uh, from this source, and uh, I need I need to bring in this. Uh, Original setup here. Okay, we we bring in the file from the uh, idealized inlet, and uh, the PCF file first, and this this one is uh, for point source. So we like to show you the the vertical line source here. And then bring in the 
since line source output, since it's output particle one. And also, uh, we need a smaller grade file. Information. Yeah, you see the a lot more particle release. And also, as time goes by, you see this source, the red, the black dot also move towards the open boundary outside the inlet, right? As you see, the the location of those three sources are different. So when when you when you run in uh, with time. So the source will move from one point, source one, to point, point two. And then the release scenario will be different from the bottom release to top release. That uh, simulates uh, the entire uh, dredging uh, operation. And as, the, as the dredging shape uh, moving from one location to the other, and uh, the material will, will have overflow or, or, or or leaking from the surface to from bottom to surface, so that's the entire water column uh, particle release. So the purpose purpose is that uh, for that kind of uh, uh, setup. Yeah, that that that's, uh, has a lot of particle here. So that that's about the demonstration. So if you don't have any questions, I would like to show you that latest application we use uh, uh, TTM coupled with the CMS uh, for Port Oxford, Oregon. Uh, we did that for Portland uh, District. And Tahiri, uh, Blackie, and I, so we did it together for, for that uh, study. So, no question, right? Or any question? I'm not on the chat screen yet. Okay, I, I do go ahead to, to the last uh, uh, part. And uh, this study is, uh, is, is running during a winter storm. And uh, winter storm period, and to determine the the source of the sediment uh, for the for the channel re re refitting in front of uh, Port Alford Port, and uh, and also uh, we investigate the uh, different brick uh, uh, water configuration uh, for for that kind of uh, influence on, on channel refitting, and this is a, a telescoping grid. Uh, we used for that study. So you see the, the domain is a pretty big. It's, a, it's a, um, 20 kilometer in scale. And, uh, also the, the harbor interior area is only like a one mile, uh, also, uh, it's true here. It's a very small area. So the, the channel is here. And that's the channel in front of, uh, harbor. So the winter storm is from south. Southwest. So these are the three different uh, kind of uh, breakwater configuration for that study. And then why is the uh, uh, modified breakwater is resume the breakwater to original uh, height, and then also remove breakwater and then open up uh, on the breakwater. And uh, so this is a hydro condition. So during that storm, so you see the current. On the left hand side, and go to towards the harbor, and then go around it. And also, wind condition, wind height is a pretty big wind, and it's almost, it's a, almost eight meter near the in front of the harbor, and uh, wind height. And uh, 
Based on this information, so we, we design like eight uh, line thoughts uh, surrounding the hybrid. Uh, so the decision made uh, between this content, uh, between, between early team and also uh, district uh, engineer. And also a trap, a few, few traps designed in front of the harbor along the channel. So that uh, will do some statistics for the, for the, for the particle accumulation, uh, in the channel to, to find out, uh, how many particles fill in the channel and from which source. Which of those line source. So that, that's the trap. It's a closed trap, so doesn't allow particle move out of trap. And uh, number number those trap from one to eight. And this is a, a animation. So you see uh, color a particle differently for uh, from different sources. And then uh, this is run through the the. the Entire month, so also including uh, an extreme uh, winter storm. And this is a uh, uh, after simulation, and uh, Tahiri gives some statistics uh, and for a different breakwater uh, configuration. You see three uh, figures corresponding to that. And also, uh, eight trap, uh, and eight trap, how many, uh, particle are trapping in those, uh, uh, different, different traps. And, uh, source one through eight, and like, uh, if you see the bottom figure, you see, uh, for removed bridge water condition, a lot of particle are trapped in the trap eight. And, uh, also, those particles from uh, different sources. And uh, source six maybe has the most of particle in that trap. So that one, uh, that analysis help us, uh, uh, also helps district uh, to determine uh, which kind of uh, uh, brick water uh, design will help uh, reduce the channel inflating uh, during winter storm. So that's uh, the that's, uh, uh, latest application for that. And, uh, I think that's, uh, that's about it. And, uh, so if you have any questions, uh, uh, please ask. Uh, also maybe, Eric, do you want to show the solution file in the last screen? Yeah. You can, you can switch to me if that's the stuff I'm over here. Okay. I can show. But there's a question from, uh, Jay that was from me. Yes, if you have a completed asset solution of a large domain, for a hurricane simulation, can you set up a PTM uh, simulation of sediment transport with source patterns throughout that large domain? Yeah. I would yeah. think, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Kind of like what was shown there, they have six or seven different sources. You could do the same thing with that um, abstract domain as well. How do I switch? That's fine. Huh? That's it? Where's mine? That's it? Yes, that's mine. I have a question, if you don't mind, Craig Carter in San Francisco. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so you mentioned earlier that it, this can be coupled with other wave models, uh, but it seems to me, I guess, that uh, it doesn't require a coupling at all. Rather, um, basically, an output file from one of these other models that you run. There's no, you don't necessarily take output from the PTM and recycle it again through uh, another model, correct? No, right. Right, it's, it's completely post-processing. So the, um, the other simulations would have already completed. No, it, it, it wouldn't be capable of doing something like, uh, you know, changing symmetry or something like that where you were to erode a certain area that would then decrease the which would change the uh, wave transformation and everything. That, that would be for something else. Right. That, that's, uh, TTM is a basically independent model. It's only one way 
when we're coupling from uh, hydro and the bridge model. Yeah. My, my other question was, uh, can, it, can it handle uh, density stratification data in what? Or in an estuary, for example. So limiting is an, uh, an input, right? That you can turn on? No. Oh, no. that's the input, yeah. Right. I didn't know if there might be a density that you can. I, 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 don't, I don't think so. It, it wouldn't change the water density. It wouldn't change the water density. Um, the output file is written in the user's guide in a session called global output and a subsection of that called uh, global output group file specification. So, uh, I mentioned kind of pointing to the wiki where there's a section on that on the same thing. Um, I basically just added this real quick while we were talking. Just so that, um, there's a, a section here that says what cards you would be able to put into your, uh, CM cards file through the advanced card section in the um, SMS. And you just specify, specify these two cards and then give the same file name that it would be looking for. And then that way you have both of those data sets of information in that one file um, when you're running from CM. Does that answer your question, um, Grant? Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Okay. Are there any other questions that we can go over? Uh, uh, explain any farther before we go for the day? Okay, yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, I think uh, through, through a program, and uh, they have a couple of people uh, working on that uh, uh, to deal with the uh, cohesive. They have put some routine, like uh, to to treat uh, uh, cohesive sediments differently, but not in this uh, uh, standard model on the on the SMS. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, if that's all the questions, uh, we're going to go ahead and go for the day. But feel free to uh, send emails to either one of us or to give us a call if you have our numbers um, and ask when you have a, a real case that you're, you're wanting a little bit of assistance with. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye. 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 Almost two hours. Yeah. Almost two hours. That's good. Eh? <laughs> Those are the records, right? I looked in the. Yeah. But in fact, nowadays, uh, in place the, the WAV file also, not a uh, standard also. WAV file? Yes, I am brick file, BRK file. That's even square is file. Yeah. And that changed in... I wouldn't but if you run inline code, right, they only output the WAV file. WAV file. The file. Yeah, yeah, only that one. For WAV file, and I asked the to before, and you said I used the 3.7 file, right? Well, I think that um, there's a way to turn on both ASCII and binary output. Yeah. 
I think that's something that I remember them saying something about this. So that's the end of it. Yeah, it's either ASCII or XMDF. Is a 2D hand mash? Uh, no, no, mash is a staple for that uh, concentration calculation. Oh, yeah. Different folders for the output, right? That's something I've been trying to get them to clean up. Yeah. It's tied to the, um, the time stamp or something, and it keeps them as individual cases because it is. You know, they're run discreetly, you know. And so, rather than combine them all into one, and they're putting them in separate slides. So. A job of them is she couldn't output the uh, CMS wave file. Did she talk to you? No. Mm -hmm. Talk to her, she couldn't put her as an HMA. 11.1, she couldn't output the file. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Did she talk to Ella? I don't know. Ella talked to her. She had more than that. She had more. Yeah, I wonder what the deal is. I mean, I know it's an SMS.